Hello biology class, we are back with another lecture. This is lesson eight titled Altitude. Uh, altitude, essentially how high up in the atmosphere are you and what effect does that have on breathing? So we're gonna talk a little bit about Mount Everest, the air pressure that's there, and then acute and chronic altitude sickness um, that can occur if you climb an altitude too quickly um, and then you guys are going to do some research about edemas, which is essentially leaky blood vessels. Could be in your lungs, could be in your brain. You guys are going to do some research on that as your, your job section. So, let's go. Everest. Everest is the highest point on Earth. It is 8,848 meters above sea level. Um, it's probably still going up slowly, but that is the official height. Uh, Mount Everest attracts many climbers. Some of them are highly experienced, but others are really, really amateur. They can get up there with the help of experienced mountaineers. Um, it's not known as a difficult mountain to climb, but the fact that it is so high brings the dangers of um, altitude sickness um, and edemas. So uh, although it doesn't have like huge sheer drops or um, cliff faces to climb uh, you can get up there just essentially on a fairly steep trail it has dangers because it is so high so um, weather wind and severe avalanches can pose a significant hazard however altitude sickness is a major cause of illness uh, and rescue mission uh, sorry a major cause of illness rescue missions and even death. So as of 2019, over 300 people have died on the top of Everest, and many of their bodies remain up there. There's no way to return them. Uh, someone would have to go up and come back down and bring them down, and there's no one to pay to do that. So they generally just stay up there and get covered in snow um, or uncovered eventually. So um, the reason that it's so dangerous partly is because of the wind, uh, weather, and severe avalanches, but also the fact that there's so little air up there. So at high elevations, there is a very low air pressure. Essentially, if there is less air, there is less oxygen for us to breathe. And if there's less oxygen for us to breathe, we get less blood, uh, oxygen in our blood vessels, and then it goes to our cells less, including our brain or our heart or our lungs, which really, really need oxygen to function. And this can have adverse effects on your health. So that's why um, in Denver, Colorado, it's, a, it's known as the Mile High City. It is uh, over a mile above uh, sea level. Uh, the air is thinner up there, so sometimes athletes have trouble uh, breathing um, or performing at the same level um, that they would at sea level as when there's more oxygen. So acute altitude sickness often occurs around 8,000 feet. Um, some of its symptoms can include vomiting, headache that doesn't respond to the usual medicine like Tylenol, you may be short of breath, or you, you may have exhaustion that doesn't fade with rest. So um, this is when you climb quickly. Acute altitude sickness is usually less severe. Uh, these aren't. This isn't anything life-threatening right here, but it can be very annoying. Uh, and you just generally feel unwell. Um, these signs could be a warning of the onset of more serious altitude illnesses uh, like chronic altitude sickness. Um, essentially the treatment is to rest and only go up farther once your symptoms have stopped. Often you need to go back down to stop the symptoms from occurring, um, not just stop going up. Uh, severe or chronic altitude sickness, essentially you can have altered balance or muscular coordination, you're unable to walk sometimes, uh, altered mental state, so it's very common to have people that have um, altitude sickness to be laughing uncontrollably uh, and then just stop all of a sudden. Um, you can have extreme shortness of breath just with simply walking or getting up. Uh, sometimes people can be angry or combative and this is a sign that the altitude sickness is having a real effect on the brain and it's getting dangerous. So further ascent is not recommended, so do not go further up unless there are options for easy and rapid descent should symptoms reoccur. So essentially, you should be going down and you shouldn't be going any further up no matter what, unless you get to a point where these symptoms do not occur anymore. 
which is very unlikely once you have chronic altitude sickness and you're at this level. Um, what I'd like you guys to do is I would like you to research altitude sickness. There are some questions for you to do. Uh, you are going to have to go to different places to research this, but it focuses uh, around edemas uh, and leaky blood vessels, which can cause all of these things that we talked about, um, altered mental state, uh, and things like that. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, other than that, I will see you soon. Thanks very much, everyone.